Hello everyone, welcome back to Marine's World. Today I'm going to take you through the construction of my stitch book. It'll probably be one of the last um, episodes that's just primarily concerned with this one because I'm actually ready to get on to other things, start a new book and start all sorts of different things. Uh, and it's been so lovely to hear from everyone. So thank you very much for that. Anyway, here it is. I'm going to take it apart. Okay, so here it is all apart. And you can see I have five sections. And each section is comprised of four pages. So two at the front and two on the back. It's a very clever construction. It's not something I invented. It all came from Anne Wood as part of the stitch book project that she had going in January. And it's called Tab and Slot. And it's because some pages have a sewn together with a slot in the middle. And some pages are sewn together with tabs on the edges and the slot is sewn up tight. And we have so three slot sections and two tab sections. So when you're putting your sections together, you sort of have to work out which ones are going to go with which. So it's obvious the ones that back each other. So one obviously had to go with two and three had to go with four. But then it's not so obvious if you're wanting it to go in a certain way because of the way that they slot together. So if you're doing something really random, it absolutely doesn't matter. But as I went through, I started off being random, but as I went through, I realised that I wanted certain ones to go together and then started to do ones specifically to go together. So I had to really work out which pages had to get put with which ones. So as you can see, we've got one and two, but then we've got five and six here. So on the way it goes together is I'm going to take my one, two slot page here. I'm going to take my page with number two on and I'm going to put the back end of that through the slot. Just fold it up and push it through. Open it up. It all should sit nice and flat. And when we close the book, we've now got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's not seven because it's the dandelion I need. And there's the dandelion there on the back of there. So again, we're going to, this one's just gone through here. It's going to go through this one as well. So I'm going to fold that up and put it through there. And again, it's going to sit nice, nicely together, just flatten it out. And now we've got those ones. So we're still going really nicely. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I need the woodland to go with there. So this is a tab. It's going to go through this slot from the back. So this time I'm going to take that one and I'm going to push it through that way. And there it is sitting in the correct place. So now I've got those two nicely together, the woodland and the foxgloves nicely together. The dragon needs this one here. And so the green man is going to go through again. He's going to go through there. And so he then, so then the dragon has her world. We turn over, we've got the reedy ground, the green man, the blue tit, the rose and the back page. And it's all together. So... A few things to note is that I really, really like this method of construction. It's really neat, 
but there were one or two problems that I did have and it was mainly of my own making because my pages ended up being really thick because I'd used more fabric I'd done sculpture things on them like those which were thick so in the end when the book went together originally the front page was like this it was back it wouldn't it wouldn't all fit together because there wasn't enough room on the page which was originally here the, that was round there like that and it there wasn't enough room to come round all the thickness and I suppose the easiest thing would have been to add something here to make it wider but I didn't want to ruin the shape of my design and so what I did was I unpicked it here which this was the spine bit really and I added a tiny little bit of fabric in there and stitched it back together again but I had to do that on that side and on that side as you can see there's my little extra bit but because I'd hand stitched everything and it was all put together with a, a running back stitch uh, it wasn't any it wasn't any bother it just took about 15 minutes to unpick it and sew another bit in and then sew it together again and put it back and that actually worked it just gave this this page the extra width to go around the thickness so I did it with the front one and I did it with the back one I had to do the back one as well you can see the original end of the page was here and I added this bit in and on this page because I hadn't cut it yet I just left it uncut I had enough fabric on my page that I didn't need to add it in but you can probably see it's an actual bigger page I've stood the right way around the page is more square because I didn't cut it to the right side and again that makes there's enough there's enough uh, enough inches or enough centimeters to go around the thickness of the insides one but I did hand stitch it all. I obviously turned my edges because I wanted the I wanted the clean look of that. But it would be just as lovely with a raw edge finish, um, and you could either just running stitch or blanket stitch the edges, and that that'll be a, a thing we can discuss when I start the next book, uh, which will be coming up. I've already got some good ideas for it. Um, but Anne, Anne's website has more details. I'll put the link in the description. Um, there's all sorts of methods of putting a book together. I know I've, now that I've started to look around on YouTube that I hadn't done before, before I'd done this, I see that people are actually using hardback books and taking the book out of the middle and then doing things with the hardbacks and that definitely could be a way of doing it and I don't think I'll be doing it like that I think I really like the feel of the soft book and I like the I like the fact that I'm not having to buy anything to make it so I'm going to mock up a couple of the, the, the slot and the tab pages out of this bit of calico and I'll stitch them both in so you can just actually see how easy it was to put them together and if I hadn't had to alter the spines if you were doing something a bit more flat there would definitely be no need to fiddle about like I fiddled about I've cut out eight pages I haven't really measured them I just drew around a bit of cardboard uh, because for the purposes of what I'm showing you it doesn't really matter what the sizes are so I've cut out eight so that I can put together one slot section and one tab section and I'll try and do both different methods so that you can see what the difference might be. Okay I've got my th I'm, I've threaded with some red so that you can see what's happening. I've got two pages here together I'm going to make a slot page. So first thing would be to measure how big your slot is going to be. So I'm just going to I'm just going to do that to find the middle and make a little crease. And then I'm going to make let's say we're going to make a six inch slot. We'll just for instance's sake, I'm just going to put a mark on with my disappearing pen. 
and then regardless of whether you are raw edge construction or not the first thing to do is sew these ends I'm going to just start with a knot because I'm just showing you what have you and I am going to back stitch just with a quarter of an inch a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to go right up to the top and it's very quick I don't know even I don't even know whether it would be even quicker on the machine by the time you set your machine up to me it is almost as quick to hand sew so I'm just going to put a couple of stitches in there to finish off snip my thread and I'm going to do the other side the same So because each section is made up of four pages, I've actually gone ahead and done two sets of two. So I've got two together like that and two together like that. So you can see I've got the slot in the middle. So the next thing to do is put these two together to make an actual section. So like that one. And what you do is I'm just going to finger press finger press this open because I did a turned over section I'm going to put the right sides together like this and I'm going to match the seams up open them out so that they're nicely so they're going to go together really nicely and then sew around the whole thing so you're sewing your four pages together so this could be page one and page two that could be page five and page six, but it's the it's the this bit, this bit that you're sewing together, and then that one there. So, and the way I did it is very quick. I it's the method I use for when I sew my clothes. If I'm doing, I, I sew um, linen things by hand quite often, and so what I do I use is a is a running back stitch. And so I'm going to start, I'm still wanting the quarter inch seam. And I start with one or two back stitches just to secure my thread. And so, and then I'm securing it across the stress, really. And I, I mean, you could mark it if you want, but I think I've been sewing so long, I tend to keep straight. So a running back stitch really is just, you're going to take a few stitches of running stitch, pull it through and then do a back stitch and then you take another another two running stitches and then a back stitch I'm doing these a little larger than I would have done in real life just to try and make it more obvious and obviously you see a different pattern to normal running stitch because you're doing that back stitch again so again it's two stitches you just pile them up on your needle I do anyway and a back stitch and what it means is that it, it is just as secure as a back stitch but it takes so much less time because of the running stitch part and when you're constructing clothes like I make my, if I make my dress um, a linen dress or something like that this is the method of construction I would use for all the seams and I normally do French seams or, f or flat felt seams and I would still put the seams together with a running back stitch. So I've just done a back stitch there. I'm going to do another two running stitches. I'm doing them separately because of the calico and then a back stitch. So a running stitch, a running stitch and a back stitch and I do that right the way round so right the way right up to the corner just put my needle in right the way round here right the way across matching your seams and right the way round back to the beginning okay I've been all the way round with my running back stitch I've clipped the corners 
so now it's ready to turn through. Uh, the only difference if you were doing a raw edge um, page I would definitely say you still do the pages together but then I would have instead of right sides together I would have done them wrong sides together because you wouldn't need to turn them through but I'm going to turn these through which is what I did in my original book I'm just going to push the corners through just going to do this just so you can see how it came together I have to say on one or two of my pages I was quite concerned when I was turning it through thinking oh I hope my I hope my um, embroidery is putting up to it but it did nothing nothing came adrift so I could put a point turner in there but I'm not going to bother at the moment so let's see pages turned through and give them a press and then the only thing left to do is to sew up the slot so the choice again would be to either um, just blanket stitch around the edge and, and make your slot really nice but I chose to hem it and so all I did was uh, turn under my quarter inch and finger press it like that so it's a bit awkward when you very first start but it soon does get easier so I'm just going to push my knot up under the fold turn the fold in get the other page together you sort of got everything lined up holding it nicely together just going to put that in properly holding it nicely together and then a nice slip stitch which again because I'm in the red thread you're really going to see it but a nice slip stitch going through as we're going round is going to just put your pages totally together so I'm just going to go round the whole slot I'll carry on till I've finished the whole thing so this time because this is going to be the tab page going to just do instead of doing the two ends we're going to do in between so we're going to sew the slot up in other words so I'm not taking it to that I'm taking it the eighth of an inch inwards and I'm still going to just use a quarter inch seam and I am still going to do running back stitch and I'm going to just sew up to that other that other mark that I've put on and just keep flattening it out you don't want to pucker anything I am actually doing quite large stitches here though so it's just two runnings two running stitches then a back stitch and you'll find that it it eats up the mileage of your seams and it doesn't waste thread it's more economical on thread I'm inside because it's been a bit windy today and I didn't want everything blowing off the outside table so I'm actually sitting at the end of my work table at the moment and I'm looking forward to filming my workroom for you there's all sorts in it So nearly there. There we are, we're at the inner mark. Oh, I think I should be putting a thimble on. The calico is quite heavy to get through. So I'm just going to do a couple of back stitches. Snip my thread. Okay, so I need to do that with another pair. So now we've got the slot sewn up. So I've done another pair of pages, but this time I've sewn the slot up. I finger press it open, absolutely you can just take it to your machine, but they go right sides together because of the way I did it. But obviously if you were doing a raw edge you'd be putting wrong sides together and then you could blanket stitch or what have you. In fact I might do half and half just to show you. 
um, that I'm going to do right sides together matchy seams up in the middle matchy middle up and then this time instead of going all the way around the outside like that we actually have to do two separate pages so we're going to start at that the place where the slot comes together or the tab now as it is comes together we're going to match those two pieces up and start and I actually backstitch this bit just to keep, give extra support I wonder whether you can see that there so I backstitched up here because I felt it needed more support than the running backstitch would give it hello boo and so get up to there and then once the corner gets turned we'll be back onto the running backstitch like that and turn the corner running back stitch now so I'm going to go all the way around matching my corners up all the way around and when I get to there I'll also go right down to there again I've gone all the way around one half if I was doing this tab page all together on the wrong side like this I'd have then just I wouldn't have stopped there I would have gone all the way around this one and I would have just left this bottom piece open so that I could turn it through but because I wanted to show you both ways I'm going to turn it out just having done one side um, obviously if you're doing the turn then your page is going to be an, a half of an inch shorter and a half of an inch narrower because of the quarter inch seam all the way around it that might be an issue or something you don't want or you do want I don't know but it just it's just the way it is so I'll just flatten that out with my fingers so you can see I have a tab page on the way to coming so there's the little tabs here's it stitched in the middle so I'm just going to pretend I've done the whole thing the other way on so if you were doing it if you wanted the raw edges to show obviously you'd st I think you would still stitch them together on the insides here you'd still stitch the slot up but then you'd be uh, wrong sides together to do the rest of it and so I'm just going to and I'm going to turn them in just because I think that'll be neater This might be something I'll do in the next one or not. I'm not sure whether I want this or not, but I'm going to turn the seam allowance under anyway, just for the just for this piece. And let's just do a bit of blanket stitch. And I am well aware that it'll probably look a bit odd to you because I'm left-handed, so I'm doing it the opposite way round to how you most probably will be seeing people do it. And I'm just going to let the the red thread um, lie along the seam like that and obviously you could do them with whatever thread you want you could do it with any colour matching colour not matching colour I don't think it's any less time or any more time than doing it the other way it's just different and it's up to you how you would like to do it so now that I've got up to the corner I'm just going to put uh, an extra an extra blanket stitch to go around the corner and then turn my work oh. I put my thimble on because it was getting hard to push the needle through the calico so I'm just going to lie that one in there and then you could proceed to go all the way round the edge with your blanket stitch which I think will look really nice I've gone right round this now so I've got one side's got turned over and there's the tabs and the other side I did as if it was raw edge I started off doing the blanket stitch but actually I changed the running stitch just because I needed it to be done because I know just how long it's going to take me to edit this together because I'm not very good at it 
Um, so the only other thing to comment on if you were doing raw edge is that I think you'd still need to turn under the quarter inch seam allowances at the tabs or else the edges are going to get involved with each other and it, I don't think it would lie very, very right, uh, very well. So really we've now got an eight page book so we can take this one. I think it's good that the tab, the slot one is the outside so I can even just... So that would be one and two, but one of these is going to be three and four. And so we're going to take the we're going to take the three and four one. We're going to take the sorry the one and two, and we're going to put this bit through the back. And can you see by keeping that tab? an eighth of an inch smaller than the slot there's no puckering it just lies really nicely in there from both sides so if i close that together obviously we've got the bigger page where i did the raw edge but there that's the way it goes together so we have one two three four five six seven eight and that would be just a really nice book itself dependent on what you were going to do in it it's got a nice little feel to it the binding would look really nicely obviously i've got two different methods going on here but the binding would look really nicely there um that's the only thing you have to think about if you're not being totally random you have to think of which page is going to pair each one I hope that's been really helpful um definitely go to Anne's website and see what she did with it um I definitely did different although I used all the construction that she did um I'm looking forward to filming the sewing room for you and I'm just going to show you how much I've got done on the raven so here's his tail look it's looking really nice so I've put I've put lace and crochet on the back here with some of the silk and the things i was cutting out the other day and i've got some nice raggy feathers going on here and a bit of dyed lace that i did because i didn't have any purple properly but i've dyed this bit of lace trim uh, with a bit of purple and green and black and it's gone on to his tummy so it looks like his tummy's got lots of feathers hanging down from it and I've also got his head more in the right oh he's got he's got a needle in his head I've just been putting his eyes in um they're not going to stay that color it just happens that I had those beads and so they they, they were perfect size so I just put them in this morning and they will be getting painted um, once I get the rest of his head done. So he's nearly, nearly finished and I'm really pleased with him so far. So here's an ongoing project. I'll just put him down. Here's an ongoing project. Um, I think I've come to the end of the stitch book videos because unless there's anything to refer to, I'll be moving on with some new things which is really exciting to do and I know exactly uh, what I want my next book to be and I've had comments about from people wanting to stitch along so I'll make sure you get plenty notice of when I'll start that and uh, the very last thing to say is just I've been so just so pleased and and about everybody who's commenting things and saying such lovely things I just yeah it's really hard to take in really I've got over 600 people who've subscribed which um is, is amazing really and I just didn't expect that at all and um I've got a new camera coming so it should make my wobbly videoing a bit better because I realised that I couldn't properly video the sewing the other day when I was trying to do the bunting. So that's all going to be an improvement, hopefully. And 
Oh my goodness, so this, the sewing room is probably going to be next and then I'll show you what projects I've got on and they're just all sorts, it's just all lovely. So uh, thank you very much for watching and I see you during the week with a, I think now that I've been looking around on YouTube, it's going to be called the craft room reveal because that's what I see other people have done. So that's what I'll be doing with mine. You're getting a sneak peek behind. You can see I don't just sew, I do knitting too. Um, so bye for now everyone. Thank you for watching. Please um, subscribe to my channel and um, send me a comment which I'm getting used to saying now, even though I was a bit embarrassed to say it at first. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye from Marion's World.